Okay, I'm going to talk to you about the life cycle of stars. Now what this means is how stars are formed and what happens to them after they essentially die. So we're going to see what happens to stars. Now, first of all, let's start with the formation of a star. They start off as a nebula. Now a nebula is just an enormous cloud of dust and gas. So what happens is there's a force of gravity that starts to pull all of this dust and gas together. As it does so, its gravitational energy is converted into heat energy and we have a rise in temperature. It starts to get really hot. When it gets sufficiently hot, we actually start to get fusion reactions occurring. Now what fusion is, is it's when we have hydrogen nuclei, when they're given, when it, we have the right conditions of high temperature and pressure, there's enough energy to join these two hydrogen atoms together and fuse them, so join the, jo fusion just means joining, to make helium. This is a fusion reaction. Now, when fusion reactions occur, they release loads and loads of energy, a huge amount of energy. So, with all of these fusion reactions going on, we actually can create a main sequence star. Now, our sun is currently in this sequence, and this sequence can last for billions of years. Um, now, the reason why it can stay stable is even though there's gravitational pull pulling everything inwards, because of all the fusion reactions happening in the core, there's also this outwards force from the heat created by the fusion. So as a result, it stays stable and can do for billions of years. Now, what happens next is this. Because there's only a finite amount of hydrogen for these fusion to reactions to be happening in the core, one day it will run out. When it does run out, we form something called a red giant. This is because all of the hydrogen has run out in the core and it's caused the star to swell up to this enormous size. It becomes red because the surface is slightly cooler than it was before. Now, at this point, we've got two different choices of what can happen depending upon the size of the original star. If we started with quite a small star, we get something formed called a planetary nebula. So, remember, whenever we hear the word planetary, uh, whenever we hear the word nebula, we know that it's to do with um, dust and gas. So a planetary nebula, we have this little hot core, and then outside of here we have just dust and gas which start to just escape out into space. Now what happens to our planetary nebula is all this dust and gas leaves over time, leaving this really hot core called a white dwarf. Now this white dwarf is just slowly cools over a very, very long period of time. So it just cools down and eventually disappears altogether. So that's the, the kind of life of a small star. This is similar to the sun uh, in our solar system. So this is what will eventually happen to our sun. However, with big stars, we get something else happening, something a bit more exciting. We get a supernova. Now what a supernova is, is it, the stars start to glow brightly again and they release an enormous amount of energy. Now there's so much energy here in a supernova that it actually fuses bigger elements together. In our main sequence star here, the only elements that we could fuse together really were hydrogen which are really small and simple atoms, whereas in a supernova we can fuse together much, much bigger atoms to make bigger elements such as gold. Now, after our supernova, again, 
we have two potential different fates. One is a neutron star. Now it's just a very dense core left over from this supernova, which is just a neutron star. The other fate, and this is for enormous stars, so absolutely massive stars, we get black holes. And black holes have such a, such a high gravitational pull that not even light can escape them. So just to quickly recap, a nebula is a cloud of dust and gas. Gravity causes it to all kind of come together. As it does, it causes an increase in temperature. This temperature is, is high enough to fuse together hydrogen uh, nuclei. This fusion reaction releases loads of energy. That's how we get a main sequence star. This sequence star is stable because gravity is acting inwards, but heat from fusion is acting outwards, so it can stay like this for billions of years. When the hydrogen runs out, it becomes a red giant and swells up like this. Um, if it's a small star, we then form a planetary nebula, which has got a core and then some dust and gas, leaving a white dwarf at the end. If it's a big, big star, then we get supernova releasing loads of energy. If uh, we then have two different fates, either a neutron star, which is just a dense core, or if it's an enormous, enormous star, we form a black hole. Thank you.